Okay, so I've been meaning to type this story up for a while now and post it to you guys but keep getting put off by work and other shit. Before I begin I'll give you some info. 26 year old male. Living in UK. Born close to Birmingham, moved to Ticknall when 10 because reasons. Quiet village in the middle of nowhere. Old people everywhere. Just so you know, the events that I'm going to write about happened over the space of, like, 14 to 15 years so I may jump around a bit. But please stay with me if you can. I'd like to get some clarity and or reassurance on this if possible. So here we go. December 2002. First Christmas in new house. House is pretty big lots of land to it. 10 acres. Behind the house is a woodland area. Behind the woods is a large reservoir. Me and dad regularly go walking through the woods. Sometimes fishing at reservoir. School holidays, mom and dad both have time off. This never happens so we spend lots of time doing stuff. One day, walk through woods to reservoir. Everything perfectly normal. Sitting on a bench looking at some boats and shit. Suddenly notice something in the water. Long white thing, can't tell what it is. It's about 50 to 60 feet away. Point it out to parents and ask what it is. Might be a dead heron. I roll with this as I've never seen a dead heron. About an hour later, walking back towards the woods. I run off ahead to feed the ducks. Notice white thing again, closer this time. Close enough to see what it is. It's a white sleeve with a bluish hand at the front. A fucking severed arm. Freakout.jpg Parents run over. Ask what's wrong. I explain that there's an arm floating in the water. Dad calms me down and tells me to look at the water. The arm is gone. Must just be stupid kid brand fucking with me. Fast forward to February 2003. In the woods with my cousin, Tom, about 8 years old. I'm 12. Building a den. About 4 in the afternoon so sun is going to be setting soon, not dark yet though. Tom goes to find more sticks for the den. I stay and carry on building the walls, not a great den, only about 3 feet tall. I put the last stick on the wall, Tom isn't back. I shout Tom and he answers, can't see him though. Start looking for more sticks myself in the opposite direction to Tom. Two minutes later, hear a scream. It's Tom. I'm scared. Why is Tom screaming? Pause for a few seconds, don't know what to do. Start running towards where Tom is. Tom is heading towards me crying. Like, really crying. Sobbing like a little bitch, red face, panicked. L ask what's wrong. He screams that a man tried to take him. We run back to the house. Parents try to calm us down. Make hot chocolate, give us a hug and shit like that. Tom tells his story. Says a doctor told him to go away with him because he wanted to make him better. Parents are concerned. Dad calls the police to report it, just in case. Two hours later, police arrive. Ask us questions and then search the woods. No one there. Keck obviously, it happened two hours ago plebs. Next month or so Tom doesn't come over and parents get a bit more protective. No more in the woods for you, Anon. Jump forward again now to the end of May 2005. I'm 14 now. Little brother, Dylan is 6. We regularly take walks through the woods and look at birds and stuff. He loves birds. Today is particularly warm for this time of year. Tom is visiting again. We go to the woods. Dylan and Tom go ahead, I'm absent-mindedly texting or something. I sit on a tree stump and carry on texting, Dylan and Tom go on ahead. Dylan runs back and asks if he can climb trees with Tom. Parents always say no. I'm not parent. Yeah, go for it. About 30 minutes pass, Tom and Dylan laughing and shouting to each other. I decide to put my phone away and see what they're up to. 
suddenly notice I can't hear them. I shout out. No response. Not concerned, just annoyed. I reckon they're up to no good. I see both of them standing by a tree about 30 feet away. Head towards them and ask what they're doing. Both boys silent, staring up the tree. What the fuck? Get closer and ask again what they are doing. No response. Look up the tree. Nothing there. What the fuck are you doing? Tom and Dylan look at me. Visibly scared. What's he doing? Freaky little fuckers. Who? What are you on about? The man in the tree. Why is he in the tree? Fuck this. There is no one in the tree. There is no one in the woods. Tell boys that it isn't funny and we're going home. Quite freaked out now. Get back to house and the boys sit on the sofa. Look pale and worried. Lenny, Tom's mom, asks what happened. I say they were playing a stupid game. Go to my room. Can hear parents talking to Tom and Dylan from the top of the stairs. Both boys say that an old man with a white coat was up the tree. Both say that I couldn't see him when they told me to look. Dad asks what kind of white coat the man was wearing. Like a long doctor's coat. About 10 minutes later dad comes up to my room. Asks about man in tree. Didn't see shit captain JPEG. Later that night once Tom has gone home and Dylan is in bed, I come downstairs. Mum and dad talk about incident. We all conclude that the boys must have seen something on TV. Think nothing of it. About 22.30, I'm on my computer chatting on MSN Messenger, old school. Mate asks if I want to meet him and some other mates at the reservoir tomorrow. Suddenly I have a realization. The reservoir. The white sleeved arm. Like an arm in a doctor's coat. Get a bit freaked out but try to rationalize the situation. Must be nothing. Go to bed. Now moving to August 2005. Family are over for a barbecue. Uncle's birthday. Good party, much fun. It's a Saturday night so all of the kids stay up late to play. About 11ish, everyone leaving or left by now. Tun's family still here. Darren's family still here. Darren is another cousin we never saw much of. Only appeared at special occasions. Like Santa. Darren is older than me, must be about 16 at this point. He's so cool. He smokes. Secretly, of course, so that he doesn't get into trouble. Me, Dylan, Tom, Darren and Paul, Darren's 10 year old brother, are all sitting on the bench by the edge of the woods. Away from house and family, not too far though. Darren is smoking and offers everyone a puff. Nobody wants to smoke. Shut the fuck up faggot. Darren is a bit of a prick. Darren's dad shouts over. Says they are leaving in 10 minutes. 10 minutes later. Darren's dad shouts again. We all decide to go back to the house as he is leaving. As we stand up and start to leave the bench we hear a noise in the woods. Rustling leaves. A branch snapping. Must be a bird or a fox. No big deal. We get about 20 to 30 feet away from the bench then hear a louder noise. Rustling and footsteps. It sounds like something walking through piles of dry leaves. Strange, not enough leaves on the ground to make so much noise. We stop and look into the woods, can't see much. Sun has been down a while but the horizon is still quite light. Can make out the trees and branches in the woods. Suddenly notice something moving. Not big, not small. It stops by a tree. What the fuck is that? Can't see much, just a shadowy figure. Looks like a tall man. At the distance we were standing I'd say between 6 to 7 feet tall. Just standing by a tree, kind of peering around the tree. Darren decides he's a big man. Oi, who the fuck are you? No response. Darren suggests going to have a look. Have a look. At the strange shadowy figure. 
that randomly appeared. What a fucking dick. JPEG. For some reason the other boys agree to get closer. We stat to walk back towards the figure, bench. It was about 10 feet behind the bench. As we get close enough to start seeing detail my heart sinks. I start to feel sick. The person is wearing a long white coat. Dylan, Tom, and Paul freeze on the spot. Darren and I move a bit closer forward. Darren shouts out again, don't remember what he said. The figure steps out from behind the tree. Can only make out certain details. Tall man. Long white doctor or lab coat. Glasses, can see slight light reflection from them. We should go back to the house. Darren tells me not to be a pussy. Okay. You need to piss off before I smash your face in. Keck. Darren looks like an emaciated schoolgirl, not sure how he intends to smash anyone's face in. The figure takes two steps forwards. Younger boys are scared, start crying. Dylan and Tom tell me that it's the man from the woods. The man from the tree. I'm freaked out now. Darren I'm taking the boys back to the house. Darren turns to call me a pussy again or something. Turns back. Where the fuck did he go? The figure has gone. We tell the adults about this. Dad, uncle, and other cousin, Jack, 24, get torches and go to look. About 15 minutes pass. They come back, no one in the woods. Eventually everyone goes home and we all go to bed. Now moving to, I think it was November 2005. Might have been early December. Not sure. Get home late from school one night, about 7 p.m was helping do the sound for a stage show the drama club put on. Police car parked outside. Oh shit. Get inside and find two police officers sat at the dining table talking to my dad. What's going on? My dad rushes over to me, visibly upset. Tells me to go to my room for a while. I head upstairs and on the way check in on my little brother. His room is empty. The light is on but he's not in there. My mum and dad's bedroom door is open. Again light on but no one in there. I sit in my room for a while wondering what the shit is happening. 20 to 25 minutes later my dad comes up to my room. Tells me that my brother was rushed to hospital. My mum went with him. So many questions. What happened? Is he okay? Why were the police here? My mum went into the garden to put some rubbish in the bin and found Dylan unconscious next to his swing set. Dad explains that he hasn't woken up and says police were here to get information. Suspicious accident involving a child or some shit. Says that we're going to the hospital now. Get changed and head out. Been at the hospital for about three hours. Everyone is upset, obviously. Dylan has no visible injuries just won't wake up. Doctor says that he will do some scans to rule out problems like stroke or brain hemorrhage. Oh fuck. Hours pass, scans come back clear. Why is Dylan unconscious then? Doctor says it may be a severe allergic reactant to an unknown allergy. Runs more tests. 2 AM, dad decides to take me home so I can get some sleep. Mum stays with Dylan. At about 5.30 we get a phone call. Need to go back to hospital because Dylan might not have much longer. Are you fucking serious? What is happening? We get there and Dylan looks weird. Skin is kind of blue-gray. Fingernails are a light purple. Mum and dad both really upset. I'm just kind of numb. Doctor says that Dylan may need to be put onto life support. Heart rate, BP, and breathing are all dropping. Two more hours pass by. Dylan starts coughing and mumbling. Dad calls nurse who then calls doctor. Doctor is visibly surprised to see Dylan waking up. Dylan starts crying and can barely keep his eyes open. Another hour passes and he has calmed now. Just lying there, skin back to normal color. Seems alert and okay. Just looks tired. 
After 24 hours of observation Dylan gets to come home. He hasn't said much, just keeps saying that his throat hurts. The next day, Dylan gets up and wants some food. He's been sleeping on and off for about 16 hours now. My mum starts talking to him about how he feels. Asks what happened. Dylan gets upset and just stares at the floor. I go over and try to reassure him. Tell him that everything is okay and all that shit. Eventually he stops crying and keeps staring at the floor. The man from the woods was here. What the shit? Mum is clearly panicked. I ask him what he means and he seems a little calmer now. The man that we saw in the woods came to take me to his house. He said that little boys that are poorly need help. Mum runs to phone to tell my dad to come home from work. I tell Dylan that this is not a joke and that he should stop telling stories. D.Y. Ian insists he isn't. I ask Dylan to draw the man that he saw. He draws a tall, skinny man with glasses and a long white coat. Just like the guy we all saw in the woods but a kid's drawing. Eventually dad gets home. Police are called. Whole area is on alert and looks out for this man. This went on for about six months and eventually it all stopped. People started saying that Dylan was a liar or had an overactive imagination. Now jumping to April 2008. I have some friends over for the night. Me, Jay, Kirsty, Natalie and Andrew. Mum, Dad and Dylan are away for the night a sitting family. Me and mates playing games, eating pizza, drinking beer usual teenager stuff around 10 30 pm we all decide to go for a walk in the woods we'd watched halloween and nightmare on elm street so we're in the mood for a fright i tell everyone about dylan's experience in the woods they all laugh and play it off as a kid's imagination andrew says that dylan must have slipped into a coma and was so scared that he used the man in the woods as a way jf rationalizing his fear we light a fire and get comfy telling ghost stories. Jay goes off to piss. A few minutes later Jay shouts out. Something like stop fucking around. Dickhead. We all laugh and call out to see what he means. He comes back to the group and says that it wasn't funny. We ask what he means again. He says that one of us was tapping his head with a twig while he was pissing. We laugh. That wasn't us. About half an hour passes and Jay gets jumpy again. He says that he keeps seeing something moving in the trees. We've all been drinking and telling ghost stories so we think nothing of it and give him a beer. He insists someone is watching us. Girls get freaked out and ask to go back to the house. The mood has changed now. We decide to move on. I suggest heading closer to the reservoir. It's a 15 to 20 minute walk through the woods. Everyone agrees and we head off. Suddenly, Christy screams. What's that? She points through the trees. We all look. My heart sinks. It looks like a man. In a white coat. Stood about 30 feet away. Without thinking say it's the fucking doctor. Everyone looks at me like I'm a freak. Something seems different now. The man is walking towards us. He's never approached us before. We start walking back the way we came as quickly as possible. The doctor lets out a high-pitched shriek. Like an injured animal. Starts running at us. We panic and sprint the fuck out of there. We get out of the trees and are back by the bench at the edge of the woods. We turn to see where the man is. No sign of him. Is he there? Still nothing. Then suddenly he appears from behind a tree, still running towards us. We run into the house and lock the door. The girls are crying and huddled on the sofa. Me and Andrew look out of the window. The man is running up the driveway towards the house. He starts banging on the door. We shout at him and Andrew says to call the police. One AO the girls does so. The door is being hit so rad that it sounds like the wooden frame is cracking. I shout, fuck off. We've called the police. The banging continues. 
I look out of the window on the other side of the house. The man is kicking the door. His arms and legs seem too long for his body. He has shoulder length, greasy, strands of gray hair. Almost resemble worms. He stops and stares right a-army. His eyes e-e-m sunken and almost yellow. I don't know what to do so I just stare back. He looks back at the door. Then he runs away. Back towards the woods. Police turn up. We tell them the story. They know we've been drinking. Underage and all that. They confiscate the rest of our alcohol and leave telling us they will be back to see my parents tomorrow. Nothing much happens for the rest of the night and, as they said, the police come back. I get grounded for a while and nobody believes that this man was chasing us. We decide not to talk about it and we avoid the woods for a long time. Now, moving on to June 2010. I was 19 now and had got a part-time job, living at home and saving money. My girlfriend, Emily, spent most of her time at my house and my parents were getting an extension built. A small summer house kind of building at the back of the main house. Friday afternoon. Builders are working on the extension. Emily heads out to work. I have three days off and no coursework to do so I get on with some serious gaming time. After couple of hours decide to go out for a walk, it was a nice day. One of the builders calls me over and asks if know what time dad will be home. Nope. Says he has something important to ask him so let him know when he arrives. I think nothing of it and head off for my walk. After about an hour I'm close to another reservoir. Not the one by my house. Stanton Harold Reservoir. I meet Jay's mum Karen. Says that Jay was talking about going camping. Sounds fun. Karen jokes that she hopes nobody chases us this time. Bitch. This ain't no joke. I head home soon after and start thinking about that night again. Get back to the woodland area near my house. Decide to go and explore a little. Not really spent much time in the woods since that night. I'm standing at the place that we had the fire. Walk over to the tree where we first saw the man. Nothing unusual. Spend about 15 minutes looking around and then head back to the house. Get back and a builder calls me again. Tells me that they saw a tall old man in the house. Ask who he is as they hadn't seen him before and had been here for six months now. Oh fuck. Ask for a description. Old. Tall. Glasses. White coat. Builder tells me he was in the window on the left on the second floor. My brother's room. I go upstairs and into Dylan's room. Nothing there. Nothing unusual or out of place. I figure the builders were local and had hear about the police being called that night. Shrug it off and get back to my game. Jumping forward again now, to May 2013. This is the last time I saw the doctor. I was 22. Getting ready to move out for university. Had some friends over. Me, Jack and Jay. We were drinking in the woods. Had a barbecue and stuff. I kept tapping Jay's head with a twig. Remind him of that night. Tells me to stop being a prick. Good point. Hours pass and we decide to search tour the old man doctor. We figured that it was just so much childish bullshit and that now we were older we wouldn't experience it again. Jack has his camera with him. It's about 7.20 pm so getting a bit dark now. We take photos and call out for the doctor to show himself. Like a shitty paranormal show. After an hour, nothing. We carry on for shits and giggles. Jack stops and says, that's weird. Shows us the screen on the back of his camera. He took three photos of a tree. On two of them there is a strange looking greenish mist in front of the tree. On the other photo. It's gone. We take more photos and call out some more. Jay decides that he wants to threaten the old man. Says he saw it on a TV show. Dickhead. 10 to 15 minutes pass and we hear a noise. 
Sounds like a dog throwing up. LOL what? We try to find THA source of sounds. Nothing. Jay calls out again. The noise stops. Then we hear another noise. Footsteps on dry leaves. Look around but can't see anything. Jack still taking photos. I get get my phone out and turn the torch on. Looking around area. Suddenly Jack calls us over. Five new photos with weird things in them. First photo looks like it was taken through a dirty window. Second photo a white mist is blocking the view. Next three photos show the tree ha was looking at but it looks like a hand is coming around THA tree. We decide that this must be the spot. Call out again and again. Hear the weird dog vomit noise again. This time behind us. Louder. Turn around and see a shadow by another tree. Surely not. It looks like a man is standing there. Watching us. Jack takes photos. The tree is too far away to focus in such low light. We get closer. Suddenly notice a smell. Like a mix of wet soil and shit. Disgusting smell. We call out and ask who is there. No response. We get closer still. Then we can see it, the white coat. I shout at the figure and ask who is there. No response. It doesn't move. Jack changes the battery in his camera. Me and Jay move closer. Literally 10 feet away from the doctor now. Can hear him breathing. Like a low deep falling growl almost. The smell is so fucking bad. Feel sick. Get a little bit closer. Can see his eyes no. He's staring at me. Literally make an eye contact with him. I'm not a small guy. Around 6 foot 3. He makes me look short. I'm having to look upwards to hold eye contact. Jack comes over and takes a photo. The doctor fucking erupts in anger. Starts growling and screaming and waving his arms around. We move back and he starts snarling like a dog. We shout at him to stay back. He starts swaying from side to side in a really unnerving way. I have never seen anyone move like this before. It's hard to describe. Like he's defying gravity almost. Jack takes another photo. Fucking madman. The doctor lets out a horrible shriek. I tell Jack to stop taking photos. Don't want to get butchered by a tall old man in a woods. The doctor stops. Like, perfectly still. As still as the tree he is standing next to. Absolute silence. We wait for about 30 seconds and then call out to him again. Don't know what to say. Hello. Nothing. He is standing perfectly still. Eyes still fixed on me. It's like he just shut down or something. Jack tried to take more photos. His camera stopped working. Fucking typical. I got my phone out and took some photos of the man with it. When we looked back at them they hadn't turned out. I tried to get another one but as I raised my phone the man started running. We chased after him. He ran fast. Almost too fast. Like, absurdly fast. We couldn't keep up with him at all. But then he stoked again. He turned and stared right at us again. I shouted something like, stop running, or, stay still. I wanted to get a proper look at this guy thing. He let out another screech. It was a sound I will never forget. Almost like a special effects sound from a film or something. Like a dragon or some shit. Then he started climbing a tree. We ran over to get a better look. Again, he was moving too fast. We looked up the tree but couldn't hear or see anything. I shone my light up the tree. Couldn't see shit. We waited for about 20 minutes. He was gone. We stayed up all night drinking and wondering what the fuck had happened. We were all spooked. We uploaded the photos to the computer. Went through each one. We went back into the woods the following night. Didn't see or hear anything. 
Soon after that I moved away to university and now I live with my girlfriend. We live about 10 or 12 miles from this woodland but I've never been back into the woods. I visit my family from time to time and I always feel uneasy when I look at the trees. I feel like I should go back into the woods now, maybe have a look around. My family still live there but have never seen anything else other than the dog getting spooked every now and then. The dog refuses to go into the woods alone and when she goes outside at night she refuses to move away from the house and just stares at the woodland. If you put your hand in front of her eyes she moves her head around your hand to keep looking at the woodland. As requested, my drawing of the doctor. I know it's terrible. He was around 7 feet tall, his arms and legs seemed too long for his body and eyes had a kind of yellow tint to them. To the iris itself. The smell that seemed to come from him was fucking awful. Like I said a mixture of wet soil and shit. Like a sewage plant that had been covered in mud or something. Just for reference hey race a screen cap of the reservoir that I mentioned.